Page 571, Chapter 44, Rule 805, Hearsay Within Hearsay. A. Introduction and Policy. When a witness repeats an out-of-court statement, that evidence is hearsay if offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted. For example, if a witness says, Anderson told me the letters were mailed out on July 17th, the testimony is hearsay if offered to prove that the letters were in fact mailed on July 17th. Similarly, any information in a document is hearsay if offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted. By definition, the statements in the document were made out of court. So statements in police reports, medical records, insurance claim forms, bank loan applications, and even widely distributed books are all hearsay. The ubiquity of hearsay means that some testimony contains multiple levels of hearsay. Witnesses often try to testify about a chain of communication such as Anderson told me that his secretary informed him the letters were mailed out on July 17th. The nurse told me that the patient had been complaining about a headache and nausea. My neighbor came by and said that she had just heard on the radio that a police officer had been shot downtown. Written documents often contain statements made by third parties. A police officer, for example, may talk to several witnesses while investigating an accident. The officer will record the witness statements as well as her own observations on a long written form. The form itself is hearsay if offered in court to prove the truth of the matters asserted because it consists of statements made outside the courtroom. But the form also contains secondhand statements. The officer's record of what other statement witnesses said even if the officer attempted to record the witness's statement verbatim, the form contains at least two levels of hearsay. It is an out-of-court report by a police officer containing out-of-court statements by witnesses. These statements are called hearsay within hearsay, otherwise known as double hearsay or multiple hearsay. Rule 805 allows hearsay within hearsay to be admitted as long as each of the out-of-court statements is admissible under an exception. Harry was stabbed by an intruder in his apartment. His roommate, Dale, came home to find Harry lying on the ground, weak but still lucid. Call an ambulance, Harry said. I was stabbed in the stomach with a switchblade knife. Dale became quite upset and dialed 911 in an excited state, exclaiming to the operator, Please come quickly. My friend Harry says he was stabbed in the stomach with a switchblade. At trial, the prosecutor wishes to prove that Harry was stabbed in the stomach with a switchblade knife. She calls the 911 operator to the stand to testify about what Dale told her about Harry's statement. Is this admissible? Yes, the 911 operator's testimony is admissible to prove the truth of the matter asserted by Harry. The first step is to determine whether the operator can testify about what Dale told her. Dale's statement to the operator qualifies as an excited utterance, so Dale's statement is admissible for the truth of the matter asserted, even though it was an out-of-court statement. But this only gets us halfway. Dale's statement was my friend Harry says he was stabbed in the stomach with a switchblade. If we admit Dale's statement for the truth of the matter asserted, all we know for sure is that Harry claimed he was stabbed in the stomach. In order to admit Harry's statement to Dale, proving that he was in fact stabbed in the stomach, we must ensure that Harry's statement fits some hearsay exception. In this case, Harry's statement was made for the purpose of medical diagnosis or treatment, so it is also admissible for the truth of the matter asserted. The layers of hearsay in this example look like this. Harry, I was stabbed in the stomach. Dale, hearing Harry, say, I was stabbed in the stomach. Operator, hearing Dale hearing Harry, I was stabbed in the stomach. Because each layer of hearsay fits into its own exception, the operator's statement is admissible. The same analysis would apply if the prosecutor used a transcript or an audio recording of the 911 call instead of the 911 operator herself. Dale's voice on the recording would be a hearsay statement admissible only because he was excited when he uttered it. 
and Harry's statement reported by Dale is only admissible because it was a statement made for the purpose of medical diagnosis or treatment. If either of the layers fails to satisfy an exception, the entire statement is inadmissible to prove the truth of the matter asserted by the original declarant. For example, suppose Dale did not call 911 immediately. He first finished a phone call with his girlfriend. By the time Dale called 911 10 minutes later, he was quite calm and collected. Dale's statements then would not fit any hearsay exception, and the operator could not testify about it. If Harry and Dale are unavailable to testify, the jury will never hear about Harry's statement to Dale. Likewise, assume that part of Harry's statement was not made for the purpose of medical diagnosis or treatment. For example, if Harry calmly told Dale, a man wearing a red shirt and black jean, jeans attacked me a few minutes ago, Harry's description of the intruder's clothing would not fit any hearsay exception, even if Dale was upset and excited when he relayed the information to the 911 operator. The operator would not be able to repeat Harry's description of the intruder's clothing as evidence of the intruder's appearance. Under these circumstances, Dale's statement to the operator fits the excited utterance exception to the hearsay rule, but Harry's calm description does not fit any exception. The rule, rule 805's text is straightforward. Rule 805, hearsay within hearsay. Hearsay within hearsay is not excluded by the rule against hearsay if each part of the combined statements conforms with an exception to the rule. The rule covers double hearsay and even multiple levels of hearsay, like triple hearsay, as long as each out-of-court statement is admissible under some hearsay exception. In the courtroom, Rule 805 does not raise many issues of interpretation. The difficulties lie primarily in recognizing the existence of multiple hearsay levels and when they exist, coping with their presence. <laughs> Laying a foundation. For the proponent of evidence that contains multiple hearsay, it can be difficult to lay a foundation for the first out-of-court statement in the chain. The facts needed to establish that foundation <clears throat> may be difficult to obtain. <clears throat> in the example involving Harry and Dale, for example, assume that neither of these speakers is available at trial. For the operator to testify about Harry's statement, the prosecutor must establish a foundation for both the statement and for Dale's statement. Laying a foundation for Dale's statement is similar to laying a foundation in an uncomplicated case of single hearsay. The operator spoke directly to Dale so she can testify about tone of voice and other exclamations he made, his coherency and other matters that might show that he was in an excited state of mind. Those facts will establish the foundation to admit Dale's statement as an excited utterance. But the operator did not speak directly to Harry, so it will be harder for, pros for the prosecutor to show that Harry spoke for purposes of obtaining medical diagnosis or treatment. If Harry asked explicitly for an ambulance, and if Dale mentioned that the fact to the, that fact to the operator, then that is strong evidence that Harry was seeking medical care. But as in the example given above, Dale would not necessarily repeat the statement to the operator. If Dale reports only that Harry said he was stabbed in the stomach with a switchblade knife, it may be difficult to establish that Harry made this statement to obtain medical assistance. The 911 operator wouldn't know whether Harry asked explicitly for medical care, whether he was trying to get to the phone himself to summon an ambulance, or other facts that might establish the foundation for an 8034 exception. Similarly, even if Harry spoke under the stress of excitement when he made his statement to Dale, it may be difficult for the prosecutor to establish that fact to admit Harry's statement as an excited utterance the judge would want to know about Harry's tone of voice what other statements or exclamations he made how badly Harry was injured how much time elapsed between the stabbing and Harry's statement and many other factors since the 911 operator only spoke with Dale she probably cannot answer these questions about Harry. <clears throat> 
with multiple hearsay in other words the courtroom witness usually lacks information about early declarants in the communication chain without that information it can be challenging to establish the foundation needed to admit those initial statements truth of matter asserted some testimony appears to contain multiple layers of hearsay but closer examination reveals a simpler situation remember that out-of-court statements are hearsay only when a proponent offers them for the truth of the matter asserted a statement offered for some other purpose such as to show the existence of a warning is not hearsay one out-of-court statement may include another statement that is offered to prove something other than the truth of its content the embedded statement then is not hearsay a party can introduce testimony like this by identifying an exception just for the layer that is hearsay. Example, Officer Ferguson responded to a report of domestic of a domestic dispute. When he arrived at the scene, he saw Tyler Koros running out of the house yelling, help, my brother Xavier says he's got a gun and he's threatening to shoot his wife. Ferguson ran into the house and saw Xavier Koros in the kitchen with his back to the officer. When Xavier spun around to face the officer, Ferguson saw a black object in Xavier's hand. Ferguson immediately shot Corus in the chest, killing him. Turned out that Xavier never, never had a gun. The object in his hand was a wallet with identification that he intended to show Officer Ferguson. <laughs> Xavier's family sued Officer F Ferguson, sued Ferguson, and the police department, claiming that Ferguson was unjustified in his use of deadly force against Xavier. At trial, Ferguson wants to take the stand and testify about what Tyler shouted when he arrived in the house. The plaintiff objects, arguing that although Tyler's statement to Ferguson was an excited utterance, Xavier's statement that he had a gun was inadmissible hearsay. Ferguson's testimony, including Xavier's statement, is admissible. Although at first... This appears to be hearsay within hearsay. It is really just a simple hearsay problem. Think the problem through this way. The first layer of this testimony is Tyler's statement to Ferguson. The statement qualifies an ex as an excited utterance. So the statement, my brother Xavier says he has a gun and he's threatening to shoot his wife, is admissible for the truth of the matter asserted. <clears throat> In other words, the jury may consider this statement as evidence that Xavier really said that he had a gun that was going to shoot his wife. If we know that Xavier said this, do we also have to know whether Xavier really had a gun and really intended to shoot his wife? No, the truth of the matter is not relevant to the claim against Ferguson. In fact, we know that Xavier's statement was not true. He did not have a gun. In this case, only the fact that Xavier claimed to have a gun and threatened to shoot his wife is relevant. That that statement by Xavier may have given Ferguson reasonable grounds to shoot him. Since we only care whether Xavier spoke those words, not the truth of the, mat of the words themselves, Xavier's statement is not hearsay. After eliminating this possible layer of hearsay, we are left with Tyler's statement to Ferguson, a single layer of hearsay that is admissible as an excited utterance. <coughs> As we move through the other hearsay exceptions, watch for situations in which one out-of-court statement is embedded with another one. If a party offers both layers for the truth of the matter asserted, each layer must have its own hearsay exception in order for the statement to be admissible. One out-of-court statement often is embedded in another out-of-court statement. A declarant, for example, will report on what someone else told them, or a document will contain a quote from a third party. Rule 805 provides that these double hearsay statements are admissible for the truth of the matter asserted as long as each level of the statement fits into an exception. However, it may be difficult to lay the foundation for the original out-of-court statement because the witness testifying on the stand may not know much about the content of the original declarant statement.